They're encouraging. So, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, uh, you might remember back in like 2021 when my wine opinions sounded like this. Cold world, new world. Yeah, I went. I mean, why? 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 <laughs> Whereas these days, I find myself having a genuine conversation at least three times a week about how the natural wine industry has shot itself in the foot to a large extent by pumping out wines that have not features, but faults and charging $50 a bottle for them and no one wants to drink. Anyway, suffice it to say that I've come a long way in my own personal little wine journey. And to save you going through three years of videos and pulling out pieces of lore bit by bit, I thought it might be worth me summarizing my experience in the industry in one video. Here we go. Title card, the early years. As we've mentioned a couple of times over the years on the channel, um, I have sparkling Shiraz to thank for my conception. Uh, specifically, a bottle of rum balls that was cracked on New Year's Eve 1994. Mum and Dad, but especially Dad, have always loved wine. He was a journalist, but also the kind of person who just has a guy for everything. And boy oh boy, did he have a few wine guys. Dad ran his own wine club called the Red Gum Selection, where he and his mates would take over the Bleasdale Winery production line for an afternoon and bottle pallets of Cab Sav and Merlot for them to drink throughout the year. Mum and I are in charge of running catering though, so seven year old me was running around the bottling line just with sandwiches while things were going on. Once I got to my teenage years, I did what all teenage vlogs do and decided that what my parents liked was lame and uncool. So for the next 10 to 15 years, wine was simply what my dad drinks and goon that we put in punch at uni games to get drunk quickly. Uh, after taking six years to get a three year liberal arts degree, I found myself working in a retail job that I hated, doing a little bit of volunteer work for a community radio station, really just going nowhere. Uh, then my mate, who was running the Unico Zello cellar door at the time, put out the call amongst our mates to have a glassy shift filled, which I jumped on. Three weeks later, I was at the Unico Christmas show, proceeded to get pretty tipsy and trapped Brendo behind the bar, telling him how happy I was in the new workplace where I as a casual employee, wasn't treated like a work van that should be flogged until it dies and then replaced with a new model. Shout out to my previous boss. Hope you're doing it absolutely awfully. Somehow, it was love at first sight though. Brendo asked me about my passions and was particularly interested in my work in community radio and as a content creator. Six months later, he approached me asking, would you like to be the idiot on my wine YouTube channel? Um. Smells white. Now, as a 25 year old at the time who loved attention, drinking wine on camera was just about my dream job. So despite only having knowledge of what Goon and Bleasdale Reds tasted like, I was properly on board. I still remember the first time I said something that was vaguely useful on the show. Um, Brendo was telling me about Appalachian and I compared it to how McDonald's cheeseburgers will taste the same no matter which Maccas you get them from. And Nora and Brendan were like, fuck, he's kind of right, isn't he? <laughs> um, uh, but at that stage, I was very much so the comic relief, like the token third dummy alongside Nora and Brendo. Title card, Henry Joyce. Expert. Uh, two years ago though, I was doing bar shifts at the Adelaide Fringe and I met this couple of comedians over a glass of wine and pitched them the idea of doing comedians in a bar getting blind taste. So Ethan and Sweeney here, would you like to introduce yourself boys? Hi, I'm Ethan Kavanagh. I'm Sweeney Preston. And together, we're Ethan Kavanagh and Sweeney Preston. <laughs> this little video series that we did a couple of years ago, wish it did better, but had a lot of fun making it. So we did the videos and they went back to Melbourne and I thought that'd be the end of that. Until the following year when they approached me asking if I would like to be the wine wine expert in their comedy wine tasting show in poor taste. And again, like the glassy shift, like the YouTube channel, I said, yeah, absolutely I'm in to a project that was way out of my depth. I was not qualified to be doing it. And the first run, it was terrifying. I was still working as a cellar door bartender who knew a tiny bit more about wine than the average consumer, but far less than the sort of audience member who would come to a comedy wine tasting. But I tasted the wines, I wrote a script, Gave it a crack, and lo and behold, it went really well. We sold out our four little shows in a local wine bar, the right person saw it, and booked us uh, to come and do a big fancy show with 20 shows next year at one of the main festival hubs. But I knew that I was gonna have to up my wine game because there was gonna be more pressure, more punters, and more expectation. Title card, the last 12 months. My role at Unico has evolved a lot this year. Um, I've gone from cellar door bartender to production line worker. I've picked grapes for vintage. And most recently, I've been put in as the sales rep, uh, where I'm tasked with heading out to local bars and restaurants to try and get our wines on the list. And holy shit, man, it is so great. What I've realized is what I love about the wine industry isn't actually the juice. It's all the weird, passionate, thoughtful, and intelligent people who farm, press, ferment, sell, and drink the stuff. You meet farmers with cancer who have shaped their entire agricultural approach about a holistic approach 
approach to health and regenerative farming. You meet SOMs who've lived around the world and have done crazy things in Italian cellars. And you meet young students who have, like me, fallen in love with the industry and are passionate about being the next wave of young gun winemakers. The great thing about doing that is when your comedian mates hit you up to do the bigger run at Fringe this year, your wine knowledge has gone from here to here because you've been spending so much time with weirdos and wine that you don't actually have to write a script. You just get on stage and talk about your passion. And that ended up going pretty well. Video of us winning the award here. In poor taste, a comedy wine tasting experience. It's not not a Fucking flex. Ah. Now what? I don't know what's next for me in the wine world. I'm loving my job as a sales rep. Uh, the YouTube channel's starting to do a little bit better. Shout out to our US viewers. It blows my little mind that majority of our audience is stateside. Thank you so much for being here. But what I do know is up until this point in my life, I've been pretty one track minded on becoming an FM radio announcer. And I recently turned down what once would have been my dream job because I'm not sure that I'm finished exploring what it looks like as a professional wine wanker, I suppose. So yeah, that's where I'm at. This is a very self-indulgent video to shoot, so I guess I should probably give you some key takeaways if you're someone who likes wine but wants to get to know a little bit more about it, get involved in the scene. So here's just a few tips from someone who's stumbled into it. Um, number one, go to your local wine bar on a Wednesday night when they aren't busy, sit at the bar and ask the bartender what wine they love that's on the list. If you get someone who's just there punching the clock, you'll notice pretty quickly, but my bet is you'll end up talking to a 24 year old baby som who would just love to chat you about the new Shannon that they've just started pouring. Number two, one of the best lessons I've learned when it comes to tasting wines is that your brain actually fires up the memory department before the flavor department. And don't fight it. If a wine reminds you of your childhood, run with that thought rather than trying to pick what sort of stone fruit the nose reminds you of. I have several times just recently gone like, ah, this reminds me of grandma's house when I was growing up. Why does it remind me of grandma's house? Oh, we used to put lime marmalade on top. This wine smells like lime. Oh my God. It's a really good way to taste them. Number three, be open-minded. Like what you like and don't be ashamed of it. If you like Moscato and someone tells you that's a dumb wine, tell them to fuck. I, right now, at home, have a five litre cask of Berry Estate Dolce Rosso. It is a sweet, chilled red wine that is stupid. I've told Brendan that I'm drinking it and he's just like, you fucking serious? And I'm like, yes, mate, I think it's yummy and I like it. Also, if you want to put ice in Riesling, go for it. Anyone who looks down their nose at you for doing shit like that are the people that I don't like in the wine industry. And lesson number four, if you like this sort of content, you should like and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for having a listen. Appreciate you guys ch checking in, especially the stateside viewers. And yeah, drink more wine, talk to the wine people. It's a great place to be. Cheers.